Stugatz here. You may not be able to run, throw, or catch like a professional athlete, but now that it's spring, you can get your lawn looking like a professional sports field, assuming your lawn gear will start. That's it. Stop by Advance Auto Parts. They'll test your lawn and garden battery for free if it needs to be replaced. They have AutoCraft lawn and garden battery starting at just twenty two ninety nine. Plus, enter the code DAN20 when you buy online to save 20%. Think ahead. Think advance at Advance Auto Parts. The Dan Levitard Wits to God Show podcast is presented by Capital One. This is Banking Reimagined. This is the Dan Levitard Show with the Stugats podcast. This is one of the many reasons that Stugats is deeply unlikable and deeply lovable. This is a thing that just happened here. So Stugats invites Chris Cody to his house, says, come do the show over here do the show from here and we'll do it together chris cody spends the rest of the day reaching out trying to make plans 10 yeah. minutes before the show yeah. stugat says hey what's up buddy and then starts yelling at him because chris cody didn't tell stugat about the octo box on nfl free agency and all of this should be upsetting to chris cody but then chris cody looks at stugat's here because we're all on remote and we're all seeing each other on our computer screens and he just bursts out laughing because Stu Gotts is scratching his back with ah. a back scratcher that says oh, good. Stu on it. Uh, what does it still have the tag on it? Is that a stupidity tag? Yeah, it's just a uh it's a stupidity tag. Um it's a back scratcher and you're not supposed to touch your face. So I am using it to scratch my face as well. I mean, everyone should get one of these. In fact, I think they're on sale somewhere. Maybe Lebanon uh Lebanon merchandise page. I have no idea. But anyway, with Chris Cody, uh it was 11 minutes before the show and he only texted me once yesterday, but he is coming up tomorrow and we got to do some things that are fun for the radio audience. How about that? All right. So just so you know, uh, Stu Gatz has been inviting Chris Cody to golf for about six or seven years, and they've actually golfed only one time. And rather famously, he invited Charlie to golf one time. Charlie showed up, drove the 90 minutes, and Stu Gatz never showed up. So nothing that he says matters at all. I wish we were on television so people could see you scratching your face with your back scratcher. But right now, all you're doing is amusing yourself and us by scratching your face with your back scratcher because no one else can see us. But I, I want to I want to start before we get into this Tom Brady stuff. He goes to Tampa Bay and that's going to look funny and feel funny. And Stu Gatz, because he loves the names, is going to convince himself that Tampa Bay is now a contender. Even though, you know, Peyton Manning, <laughs> Peyton Manning descended from MVP to a season of nine interceptions and seven, I'm sorry, nine touchdowns and 17 interceptions. It happened very quickly. Tom Brady is 43 years old. Peyton Manning is now 43 years old. Like he is going to continue aging. I don't think that Stu got believes that i think stugatz believes that he's going to be rejuvenated because mike evans is big and tall and fast and oj howard is big and tall and fast so you've you've already talked yourself into they're going to win the nfc right yeah definitely um they're going to win the nfc they're going to make it to a super bowl they have godwin they have mike evans they have oj howard i think that that robot that machine cameron braid is still there for brady to throw to inside the 10 yard line I have the uh, I have the Buccaneers. In fact, if I can get a uh, a bet on this, I'm certain I get a good price today. I have the Buccaneers winning the Super Bowl and making it to the next two. I don't know if they win back to back, but they are definitely going to win the Super Bowl next year. He just loves names, and uh, Tampa Bay would be playing the Super Bowl in its own city. What else do you got? Those are good names, though. You would agree. Like, this whole notion that he needed Bruce Arians. He didn't need Bruce Arians. Bruce Arians needed him. Tom Brady's won six Super Bowls. He's won four Super Bowl MVPs. He's won three regular season MVPs. He didn't need Bruce Arians. What he needed was Evans, was Godwin, was Cameron Brait, was O.J. Howard. This whole notion that somehow Bruce Arians is going to fix Tom Brady. Tom Brady doesn't need fixing. He's had 20 years of playing quarterback at the absolute highest level you could play the position. He doesn't need fixing from anyone. 
Bruce Arians needs Tom Brady, not the other way around. This whole, like, I am getting tired of this whole conversation that Bruce Arians is this quarterback whisperer, offensive tired. guru, when You're in Arizona his it. offense is finished at the bottom started, 15 for the three years. The conversation started five seconds ago. How right. are you already tired of it? I'm tired of Bruce Arians, this offensive what? genius, which is he is not. He's just yes, not. He is. I mean, he, he, he Look no. what he did with a rookie, Andrew Luck. Look, look what he did with Carson Palmer. You watched the football life like I did this weekend. He rejuvenated that man's career. And what we saw last year in New England was Tom Brady, and he didn't really make that make it that much of a secret. He needed weapons, weapons that he was used to, tall targets. You saw how much he looked older after Rob Gronkowski retired. That's the tallest receiving core, I believe, in the league. And I'm not going to put O.J. Howard in that class. He was had a very disappointing year last year, but those are much better tight ends than he had in New England. These are the weapons that he's been begging for in New England. I don't know if it's actually going to result well. This looks on the surface like such a, a vintage bad way to end a career, but while Dan was reciting Peyton Manning's career totals and what he looked like at the end of his career, he failed to mention that Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl. Yeah, he won a Super Bowl with a great defense, and again, a season where he had nine touchdowns and 17 interceptions. Is there... I'm, I'm dead serious about this, two guys. Is there a team I could have put Tom Brady on that you wouldn't have had going to the Super Bowl? Like any team, because the Jets. Tampa, Tampa Bay, Tampa, <laughs> Tampa Bay was one of the worst teams in the league last year. They, I mean, they were, they were really bad. And so the idea that he would go there and that you would talk yourself into, well, he's going to win the Super Bowl is, I mean, it's pretty laughable. Well, Dan, they were seven and nine last year. They're in a division with the, I understand the Saints are in that division. They're pretty good. They were 13 and three, but the Falcons are also in that division. Carolina's in that division. Uh, he's certainly, I mean, it's him and Breeze as the two best quarterbacks in that division. And the NFC is just not as strong as the AFC is. And so, yeah, I mean, and football's just such a strange game. I mean, you would be shocked if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yes, made it I to a Super be, Bowl? I would be shocked because we've talked about this. I, I will not be shocked if Tom Brady has a few excellent games next year. Tom Brady, at 50 years old, will be capable of having some excellent games. But there's such a profound difference. If you remember what Joe Montana... Joe Montana made the playoffs when he played for the Chiefs. It was still a terrible decision. Made the playoffs because there's such a big difference between winning some of your games and then being able to win all of your playoff games. Like, right. that's... Like, the idea that at 43 years old you would be able to summon the best at during the last three or four games of your... 43 year old season to beat some of the best teams in the league. It's just such an enormous ask when the way the aging process works is that the guy can still bring it sometimes, but he just can't bring it as consistently. I think the Chiefs went to an AFC championship game with Joe Montana. They didn't win it, but they went to an AFC championship. Did game. they? I believe I they did. Yeah. I believe I, they did. I remember him running around and losing and it looking wrong, uh, all kinds of wrong in that uniform. I'd be curious what age Joe Montana was also when he was doing that. I want to get to some Brady sound here because you're going to get a variety of different opinions from everywhere. The AFC East finally after 20 years. I mean, these teams in the AFC East have been awful for two decades. Dol Dolphins, Buffalo, Jets. They are so happy to have Tom Brady gone. And so now the mayor of Buffalo, this is Byron Brown. Uh, this, listen to him, what he's saying as Bills fans are celebrating, obviously, that they have an opening in the division. Just a reminder, bars and restaurants are open for takeout and delivery only. So for those of you that want to celebrate Tom Brady leaving the New England Patriots and hopefully leaving the AFC East. There are no mass gatherings. Celebrate responsibly, celebrate at home, and with less than 10 people present. <laughs> Man, there are so many gross noises coming from Dan's body right now. That wasn't from my body. I don't know what that sound was, that but was, that was not my body. I don't know what oh, that sound was. Oh, I, I, okay, so just to give you the setup here at Dan's house, for whatever reason... He has a sweating problem. It's well chronicled. Hold he, on a second. Let's do this. Keep, let's he, do this next segment. I want to make fun of me next segment because I'm deeply unhappy right now. Let's talk about this next segment. Also, Sugats was right. Holy bleep, Sugats was right. Joe Montana did go to the AFC Championship well, game. He lost to the Buffalo Bills, and history doesn't know what might have happened had Joe Montana not suffered a concussion during the third play of the third quarter. 
So during these uh, trying times, we do not have access to the normal things that we have access to. And so this is a lesser version of our show. It has actually felt like work the last couple of days. I can't remember radio feeling this uncomfortable. I feel like we can lose sport more easily than losing all of our chemistry and all of the, these things that keep happening that are just making everything around here really uncomfortable. And I know there, you know, I just saw the line at some Costco that stretched, you know, f- for what seemed like a mile of socially distant people. The economy's falling apart. People are dying. This is very low on the list of complaints. But I want to get into how bad and uncomfortable I've been the last couple of days because this show is very difficult to do if I'm not relaxed, if it just becomes another sports show if I can't talk to you guys and be confident and relaxed. But before I do that, let me just get through some Brady sound here. i got to go to Bristol to get it. Bubba, go ahead and play those WEEI callers in Boston that were talking about Brady. Uh, Some people are mad, and it's just funny listening to sports radio and what happens when something like this, when an ending goes wrong. Listen to the first call to WEEI. Hey, there's absolutely no loyalty in sports, man. Absolutely no loyalty. You know, this ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not even going to follow the Patriots anymore. There you go. I'm not following the Patriots <laughs> anymore. Uh, how about 20 years how about of we, loyalty? <laughs> yeah. How about we sideswipe Belichick while we're at it? Go ahead, Bubba. Nobody's going to the stadium to see Bill Belichick. Nobody. They have the toughest schedule next year. They'd be lucky to scratch seven and nine. He has never won a single thing without Brady, and he walks around being disrespectful to everybody when they win. But what do you think he's going to do when they're going six and ten? What do you think they're going to do? What do you think people are going to do? How are they going to react to that? I mean, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's right. Belichick is nothing without Brady. Uh, how about uh, the Patriots are tanking now? Let's hear that sound. What I'm thinking is uh, this looks like a tank job to get Trevor Lawrence. I mean, we've had all these free agents that were available, and they just went by the wayside one by one. <laughs> and so you'd, you'd think those two guys, you'd think in Tampa Bay, right? In Tampa Bay, they must be happy. They must be, like, totally thrilled in Tampa Bay. Let's go to a Tampa Bay sports radio caller. All I'm saying, we went and got Bruce Arians, right? Yes, sir. It's the no risk it, no biscuit type quarterback. You told this young kid, slang it, slang the rock. He's slanging it. Now, you know, you, you got to give him a second chance. He had four years with coaches that weren't teaching him nothing. This is the only coach that came in that he can really learn something from. Cutter was not what it was. All it was hyped up to be. Then he didn't have a defense. Now you putting your pieces together. Now you kicking them to the curb. That, you know, come on, like you did the same thing with Doug Williams. You repeating history, yeah, for a Super Bowl. But what you gonna do if Tom get knocked out? Then we bite right back to square one. Wait a minute. I think I know that guy's angle. <laughs> I, think, I think I know, I think I know what he's upset about there, and I don't know that it's the quarterback, but. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd have a better argument uh, for him if he wanted to look at what happened with Patino and then try and figure out if a black coach could ever possibly make it back the way Patino has made it back again and again with the same resume than replacing Jameis Winston with Tom Brady. But what I wanted to tell you, Stugatz, and what I wanted to tell the audience is um, the difficulty in doing the show this way like i am really stumbling around with this trying to figure out how to do this and i'm i'm having a hard time with it like you guys can tell i'm breathing heavy i'm sweaty i'm uncomfortable like it it really <laughs> look at chris looking at me you do look sweaty you do look unpleasant yeah like, but that's see- normal i mean you know so yeah it listen is I, I, you, yeah i don't it want is- you to beat yourself up too badly dan you, you've been bad but you haven't been that bad there have been some good moments here uh during the show over the last couple of days bad but not you know not terrible i mean sir you're the blaine gabbard of sports radio host it is a curious decision for someone that sweats so much to keep your house at 90 degrees i don't understand it for the life of me he has the the uh the the patio doors open it is so soggy in here and it's uh it's lacking in some self-awareness dan you should bring down the degree total by like about 20 in this apartment 
Okay, well, I will do that. It's not going to help make me any more comfortable. It's doing going to this help me make. Way. It's going to help me more comfortable because you are <laughs> damp. Are the Patriots going to end up getting Cam Newton, Stugat? Uh, I, I think the interesting part is the inability to run a physical on Cam Newton. Like, how how are you going to trade for Cam Newton or sign Cam Newton if you can't? You know, we discussed uh, this with Mina Kimes. Uh, how are you going to do that without being able to perform a physical on Cam Newton? Like, how is all that going to work? I, I think it makes sense for Belichick to go after Cam Newton, but I think he needs to know, obviously, if Cam Newton is going to be healthy long term. And I don't know if he could be assured of that right now. What if you were to get Cam Newton on a team-friendly contract when he's 30 years old? I understand what you're saying. You can't be certain that he's healthy. But the only reason that you're able to get him at 30 years old is because you can't be certain that he's healthy. To me, they would get him and they would get him cheap, would they not? Like they would, this is exactly the kind of thing. Now, I don't know whether Cam Newton is accurate enough for Bill Belichick's liking. When you look at his completion percentages in a primitive offense in Carolina, I don't know if Bill Belichick is going to want that because, uh, he doesn't throw a lot of interceptions, but he doesn't, he doesn't complete a, a high percentage of his passes. He's only had a couple of seasons. Other, you know, at a time when you got the Drew Breeses of the world completing 75% of their passes, um, that's a very specific and precise offense. I don't actually know, um, how he would fit there, but I can't believe that the Patriots are going to go into the season with the quarterback situation they have now. You think they'd try it that way? Uh, only if they're tanking, like that caller suggests, who called into, uh, who called into the radio show. No, I, I think they're going to sign someone here, Dan. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be Cam Newton. I'd really love to see, I would, I would love this. I'd love to see them make a run at Jameis Winston and sign Jameis Winston. I would love Belichick to succeed with Jameis Winston. I'm rooting for Belichick to succeed without Tom Brady. I am not the other way around. I would love it if he could take Jameis Winston, get the interceptions down from like 30 to 33, get him down to like 16 or 17, and make a 10-year run here with Jameis Winston and do something that Bruce Arians couldn't. I think that Jameis Winston is one of the least likely quarterbacks in the history of the sport <laughs> to end up in New England. Honestly, he he threw so many interceptions last year and could have had 15 more if he had just had cornerbacks around that had caught what were interceptable passes like that is exactly the quarterback Belichick would hate to have but Jameis Winston threw damn near 45 interceptable passes last year I know, but don't you want to see Belichick get it done with a guy like that? <laughs> I mean, but there's no way. It's a, it's that it's that whole thing of, yeah, Abe Lincoln would have enjoyed the play, save for the gunshot. Like, you can't have Jameis Winston without the interceptions. Like, that, that that's not Jameis Winston anymore. Jameis Winston is a totally reckless quarterback. You can't fix that. Nobody can fix that. I mean, you take that to a weird place with Lincoln. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. All guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Ryan Rucco, one of the voices of the Nets, going to join us here in just a minute on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Pennzoil synthetic motor oils are made from natural gas. It gives you unbeatable engine protection. The proof is in the Pennzoil based on sequence 4A wear test using SAE 5W-30. Here's your Sports Center update. Tom Brady is expected to sign with the Buccaneers. Phillip Rivers has signed a one-year $25 million deal with the Colts. The Cowboys signed Gerald McCoy to a three-year deal. Four Brooklyn Net players, including Kevin Durant, have tested positive for the coronavirus. The Lakers were the last team that played the Nets and are expected to have their players tested. And finally, officials with an Indian railway company said that they have started using... The recorded sound of buzzing bees to keep elephants from wandering onto the tracks. Elephants are known to avoid bees for fear of being stung. The company said the system was adopted in response to an increasing number of elephants killed in collisions with trains. Sports Center brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Think ahead, think advance. At any time, one in four batteries is about to fail. Get a free battery test and free installation with any automotive battery purchase only at Advance Auto Parts. For all the latest headlines and information, Tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. 
We'll get to Ryan Rucco in just a second. Somebody sent me on Twitter like a Bollywood movie poster, uh, an action movie poster of a guy, Stugatz, that looked exactly like me, sort of merged with my father's face. And so I want the Internet to name that action movie. I'll start with Diabetes Hard or Fat and the Furious. Hashtag Dan Action. I want a name for that movie, me as an action star, uh, let's see what we get on the internet. You said that Ryan Rucco was one of the voices of the Nets. Is that insulting to Ryan Rucco? We're having him on because uh, four of the Nets have tested positive for coronavirus. Mike is holding up the uh, picture of this guy. How much does this guy look like me, Stugatz? He's like, this guy looks like me wearing glasses. It's my f- bloated face. It's the beard. He's got more hair than I do. But I am killing it in Chanel Oral too, um, where I'm holding a gun, and I don't, I don't know what Bollywood movie that is. Is that an insult to you, Ryan, to call you one of the voices of the Nets? <laughs> oh, come on, man. Not, not, not at all. Not when the other one is Iron Eagle. I'm good with it, and I'm just, I'm just happy I'm with you guys. So now I know I have more content to watch with your your new Bollywood movie, Dan. <laughs> yes. Can you tell me, please, what happened with your team? Kevin Durant has tested positive for coronavirus. Three other nets. Um, do you uh, can you give us some of the backstory there? Yeah, I mean, um, so, you know, we were all just on a uh, West Coast trip um, where the nets left uh, for L.A. on Monday. Um, and I did travel with the team. And then uh, nets played the Lakers on Tuesday, uh, a broadcast I did. Then the team, Wednesday, went to San Francisco when they were there, you know, in anticipation of their game against the Warriors Thursday. They, of course, ended up finding out the season was suspended and eventually traveled home. So there's no way for the team to know exactly when the players contracted uh, the virus. But basically all of us who were part of the traveling party at any point uh, during that period um, have been told to – monitor our symptoms, to self-quarantine for a two-week period, um, and to let them know if anything changes with how we're feeling at this time. Has everyone been tested? Uh, How does this work? So uh, I I am not sure exactly who has and hasn't been tested. I know for, like, my Yes Network colleagues, some of whom were part of the traveling party, you know, we were not tested, um, and we were just told – you know, to monitor symptoms, because as you guys have seen, especially if you're part of, you know, a group that shouldn't be high risk, a lot of the, you know, national advice has been, hey, stay home, monitor symptoms, you know, only go and get a test if you reach these thresholds, a temperature over 100.4, or if you have a cough, um, or if you are in one of those subsects that's a little bit more susceptible. I think uh, the members of the organization uh, who were still, you know, with the team in those days um, prior, I think, you know, they may have uh, have gotten tested, but I, I'm not exactly sure how many did or didn't. The only thing we know for sure is the four players uh, who tested positive and that every single one of us who uh, who was with the team at any point during that trip has been told just to self-isolate uh, for a two-week period starting from last Saturday. So until not this Saturday, but the Saturday after. So, Ryan, like when you when you heard the news about the four Nets players testing positive, obviously this is something that anybody could catch. But as somebody who's close to that team and close to those four players, kind of put us through that process. What was going through your mind there? Well, it freaks you out a little bit, right? <laughs> like how yeah, is, of course. you know, I, yeah, man. So, I mean, and the first thing I just thought about too is, you know, anybody who I was in contact with, you know, in the immediate aftermath of my trip, uh, you know, with the Nets. So, like, for example, I did our ESPN game in Dallas on Wednesday, um, Denver, Dallas. So I immediately contacted Tom Rinaldi, Doris Burke, our producer Ian Gruca, our director Jeff Evers, you know, the, the crew I was with that night and just said, hey, just so you know, this happened with the Nets. I feel totally fine. I have no symptoms whatsoever, but you may want to just be extra cautious monitoring yourself, given that, you know, I was traveling with a group that was exposed to it. You know, I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard to exactly calculate, and you get the feeling that at some point we're all going to be, you know, one person away from someone who has it, right? It just feels like it's spreading in that regard, but... Of course, like when the news first came down, I felt a little uneasy and then also just 
trying to be conscious of who I had been in contact with in the aftermath. Although I will say, guys, as soon as I got off the road, just like given the circumstances around the NBA and how tight that circle is and the fact that I was traveling, I've, I've almost been completely uh, self-isolated except for you know being with my fiance since I got back off the road a week ago. Uh, were the Nets showing symptoms? Forgive me uh, if I didn't hear you uh, correctly. Were there uh, were there any players with fever or symptoms, or was it a Donovan Mitchell case where they're walking around feeling fine and then they just happen to be positive? Yeah, so three of the four guys don't have symptoms that tested positive. Three of the four are completely asymptomatic, and uh, and one of them, uh, as far as we know. Um, just has body aches, and that's just based on. I think it's Woj who uh, who reported that aspect, but you know, but the, but the Nets also have made clear that three of their guys were completely asymptomatic. So the Nets just, you know, they tested all their guys, you know, as a precaution after everyone who you know was in contact with each other, um, and uh, and same thing. What you said, Dan. I mean, as we saw with Donovan Mitchell, you know, there are there are obviously. You know, there's a group of people who seem to be asymptomatic for a period of time uh, before they get symptoms, and then there seems to be a group of people who remain asymptomatic. I don't know what the delineation is there, but, you know, the good news is three of the four Nets uh, do not have any symptoms despite testing positive. Have you heard a lot of complaints about the fact that rich people have access to these tests? Like, I and I do know that that, that these uh, I thought I saw reported that the Nets, you know, they paid for this. They paid to have this done privately. Yeah, I I honestly I don't know. I saw that report too, um, and I, I I don't know. Uh, and this isn't me being coy. This is me being honest. I really don't know how they they did or didn't get their test. But the way I look at it is, and I did see, like I saw what Mayor de Blasio said, and, and obviously I saw some people saying, like, hey, how come they're getting tests and other people aren't? But the only thing I can think about is, like, if you're an organization and you have access to that through whatever means, like, you're going to try and take care of your family, right? Um, and that's who you're responsible for in that moment. Just like, Dan, if you, you know, I don't know, if you happen to have a test and you want to get your dad tested, you would, right? Like, I mean, I think... So I kind of think that's the way the organizations, this is just me speculating, but their mentality probably is, hey, if we happen to have access to it, we want to take care of our family and also get a handle on this. But as far as like, you know, the limited number of testing, I think it just, that obviously it's a much broader issue beyond something that the organizations can control. Ryan Rucco with us, 30 seconds or less. What happened with Kenny Atkinson? Dan, I, I, I feel like, you know, it, it, it felt like it, it just sort of crumbled abruptly. Um, you know, I, I don't think any of us saw it coming. It felt surprising. Um, but I'm guessing that both Kenny and Sean got to a place where they both kind of realized that he wasn't going to be the guy next year for Kevin, for Kyrie, and for this group moving forward. And they figured if he's not going to be the guy next year, it benefits both parties to cut bait this year, and that's why they decided now is a better time than later if it was inevitable. Ryan, appreciate your time. Thank you for the insight, sir. Stay safe. You got it. You guys as well. Be well. Thanks, Ryan. Stugatz here. People do amazing things every day, so it makes no sense that they shouldn't feel confident about doing their taxes. TurboTax believes that with the right tools and encouragement, people could do anything, even taxes. And with TurboTax Live, you can have access to CPAs and EAs on demand who are available to answer your questions or to give advice on how to file, even on nights and weekends. So you can do your taxes with ease and confidence and never feel stuck or alone during the tax process. You can also rest assured that you'll get your best possible outcome, which means you can file your taxes quickly and easily and get back to all those amazing things people do every day. TurboTax. All people are tax people. If you missed any of our interviews, check them out on demand in the Dan Levitard Show podcast brought to you by Capital One. Why settle for average with Capital One? You could open a savings account with a rate five times the national average. Welcome to Banking Reimagine, Capital One. What's in your wallet? Capital One and a member FDIC. All guests on the Dan Levitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. Stugatz, I'm always talking about how difficult it is to do the measurements in football on anybody and... I would ask the audience, Guillermo, put this on the poll at Lebetard Show. Uh, can you name uh, uh, an offensive guard that's not on your team? Uh, and the reason that I ask 
this question uh, is because Eric Flowers was like the second best uh, offensive lineman in the history of the University of Miami. He also uh, is the worst interview that we've ever had on this show. He came on to talk about <laughs> how he didn't have an agent or he wasn't going to do it through his agent, and the interview was just dreadful. And so he he's a first-round pick with the Giants, and I'm not making this number up. He allowed 169 pressures as the tackle for the New York Giants. Right. And... Uh, and he found himself in a situation, also had 29 penalties. He had that one game, I don't remember, it was against the Lions, I think, where he allowed a bunch of sacks in the first half, and they had to protect him in the entire second half. And so he leaves, he goes to Jacksonville, and then he goes to Washington. He moves over to guard, he's a mammoth of a man, and then he ranks well as a guard uh, because he's huge. And now the Dolphins just gave him three years, $30 million. And I say all of this to ask you the question, did the Colts actually upgrade their quarterback situation? I have no idea. I mean, I really don't. Based on how I don't think anyone does, by the way. I think on the surface, people would say, well, of course, you went from Jacoby Brissett to Phillip Rivers. But when you look at the numbers last year, I think Brissett had a better year. <laughs> so, I mean... I don't know, but with Philip Rivers, what you're hoping for is you can get the guy from a couple of years ago who had one of his best seasons just two years ago. You're hoping you can get that back in Indianapolis. That's not what I'm hoping for. That's not what Mike's hoping for. What we're hoping for is that Philip Rivers takes that down uh, eight, uh, needs to go the length of the field with 30 seconds left and no timeouts uh, with him. That that isn't a Chargers <laughs> problem, that that's a Rivers problem. I'm dying to find out. I'm dying to find out whose fault this is. Is it Philip Rivers or if it's the Chargers? And we're going to find out next season. Whenever it happens... Where exactly patient zero is? Is it Philip Rivers or it's the Chargers having to go the length of the field with no timeouts under a minute left? Mike, if you had to guess, I, I, like I think it's a Rivers thing and not a Chargers thing. I think Maybe that's going to follow Philip Rivers to the Colts. He's cursed. Guillermo, put it on the poll at Lebetard Show. Down eight, uh, th you know, length of the field to go, no timeouts, uh, thirty seconds left. Is it a Rivers thing or is it a Chargers thing? And then subsequently also ask the question of what you're rooting for next year. Are you rooting for the Chargers to find themselves again in that situation? Do we know who the Chargers quarterback is going to be? Do we have any idea who's going to play quarterback for the Chargers? Uh, I have no idea. Is Tyrod Taylor still there? Is he, is he a San Diego Charger? Uh, he is there, but is he going to be their starter or are they going to go after someone else? Because it's being said that they've tried to put a package together for Tom Brady. Oh, we got to talk about what happened with Colin Cowherd. He's taking a victory lap on on breaking the news that Tom Brady was headed to Tampa Bay. We didn't even get to this yesterday. <laughs> you were so excited because sure. Colin Cowherd just said Brady has made a decision, but he didn't tell us what the decision was. He just told us he got a text. And you're sitting there saying, I got a text too. Why can't I report that I got a text? Uh, right, I did. I got the same text as, uh, as Colin got. Group Chris Cody, because he couldn't go to your house, uh, Stugatz, even though you invited him to your house and then didn't answer any more of his texts, <laughs> went to his father's house. And so Greg Cody of the Miami Herald, longtime NFL writer, he knows all about the league. Maybe he can do some of these measurements. He has just popped up in a tiny little screen on my computer here in a way <laughs> that makes me happy at his house. He has no idea what this technology is. He's giving me the double thumbs up. Maybe he can tell us uh, whether the Indianapolis Colts got any better at quarterback. Did they? Well, I'm so Tom Brady intensive. He's Dan Stu and Greg Cody on ESPN Radio.